A new climate change report is out by the U.S. government, and it is absolutely, positively terrifying. So a team of 13 federal agencies put together the analysis. It's the fourth national climate change assessment, and it had the input of a thousand people, including 300 leading scientists in the world. And um, they say that by the end of this century, we could be looking at over nine degrees Fahrenheit temperature increase. Yeah, so um, I'm no expert, but that strikes me as game, set, match <laughs> on this whole humanity thing. Um, people don't understand the consequences of that. I feel like a lot of people who are climate change deniers, they rarely look at the sentences that come after the initial sentence, which I just laid out for you, that there's going to be X amount, in this case, nine degrees Fahrenheit in temperature increase by the end of the century. They stop there. And so they say stuff like, well, wouldn't it be nice if the winter was warmer? I like warmer weather. You don't like warmer weather. And they don't realize the implications that this has for drought, for famine, um, for big cities, for wars over water. I mean, that's, uh, that's going to be a major issue in some of the developing world. So let me give you a little bit of what they say here. This is CNN. The cost of climate change could reach hundreds of billions of dollars annually, according to the report. The Southeast alone will probably lose over half a billion labor hours by 2100 due to extreme heat. Farmers will face extremely tough times. The quality and quantity of their crops will decline across the country due to high temperatures, drought, and flooding. In parts of the Midwest, farms will be, farms will be able to produce less than 75% of the corn they produce today, and the southern part of the region could lose more than 25% of its soybean yield. Heat stress could cause average dairy production to fall between 0.60% and 1.35% over the next 12 years, having already cost the industry $1.2 billion dollars from heat stress in 2010. When it comes to shellfish, there will be a $230 million loss by the end of the century due to ocean acidification, which is already killing off shellfish and corals. Red tides, or algae bloom, that deplete oxygen in the water uh, and can kill sea life, like those that triggered a state of emergency in Florida in August, will become more frequent. So they go on to say that thousands more people will die in the U.S., um, and that's a direct result of the increasing average temperatures. And then mosquito and tick-borne illnesses like Zika and dengue uh, will increase drastically, and asthma and allergies will worsen. Um, and then they also say here, wildfire seasons already longer and more destructive than before could burn up to six times more forest area annually by 2050 in parts of the United States. Burned areas in southwestern California alone could double by 2050. Dependable and safe water for the Hawaii, the Caribbean, and others are threatened by these rising temperatures. Along the U.S. coasts, public infrastructure and $1 trillion in national wealth held in real estate are threatened by rising sea levels, flooding, and storm surges. Energy systems will be taxed, meaning more blackouts and power failures, and the potential loss in some sectors could reach hundreds of billions of dollars per year by the end of the century, the report said. The number of days over 100 degrees Fahrenheit will multiply. Chicago, where these days are rare, could start to resemble Phoenix or Las Vegas with up to two months' worth of these scorching hot days. Chicago turning into Phoenix or Las Vegas in terms of how many high temperature days they have. Up to two months of 100 degrees or more is what they're facing. Yeah, um, absolutely devastating. And the thing that uh, struck me about this is it doesn't matter what your political ideology is because there's honestly a little something for everybody in this. So if you're somebody who's on the left, you know, it doesn't take much to convince you at this point, given all the evidence that's out there already. Um, the fact that there will be drought and famine, by the way, another thing that we've uh, talked about previously is that the 
parts of the Middle East will be uninhabitable by the year 2100, which means an even bigger refugee crisis. But that's the point. Uh, when you look at the environmental impact, um, it's an absolute disaster. When you look at the human toll, it's an absolute disaster. But for the people on the right, um, it's an absolute disaster economically, which is something that, you know, should appeal to what they say their belief system is. That, you know, they don't want big government, they don't want um, to have to partake in the in the giant effort to ameliorate the ills of climate change, which we're definitely going to have to do. Well, then the answer is simple. The more you do up front, the better, better it is. And there's a giant economic opportunity waiting for us if we were to go down the green energy, renewable energy route and try to build a totally a green energy economy in a short time frame. See, they always, they talk about it as if climate change is going to destroy our economy because we're going to have to wean ourselves off of fossil fuel. But the reality is, that's where the next economic boom is going to come from. I mean, there's already, you know, the fact that we have one degree or another of a, a technological boom happening, and it's, I mean, been happening uh, to one extent or another since the 1990s. Uh, but the next, you know, direction that we can go in, which will create many jobs and billions of dollars in wealth, um, that would be a, a green technology revolution, a green new deal. Which is why it's it's kind of hilarious when you have people on the right and corporate Democrats who are staunchly opposed to the actions of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and the Justice Democrats who are saying, no, we're, we can't wait anymore. We need to do a Green New Deal and we need to do it ASAP. So let's form this committee, get the legislation ready, and let's go. Because we don't have time to waste anymore. And the thing that scares me is every time one of these climate change reports come out, the the findings are oh, it's worse than what we thought the worst-case scenario was. That's devastating, and that's terrifying. And, you know, the, the common thing that everybody says is, oh, think about your children or your, your grandchildren or your great-grandchildren. Bitch, think about you! <laughs> Look at what's happening right now! As a direct result of climate change, you have, um, you know, increasing extreme weather events on both ends of the spectrum. Both ends of the spectrum. So that's why you get, like, Trump go, uh, coming out there uh, a few days ago and saying, looks like a record cold streak on Thanksgiving. What happened to global warming? <laughs> well, there's a reason why climate change is the term that's used more often now. Sorry about that. Just hit the microphone. Um, there's a reason why climate change, the term climate change is used uh, more often now. It's a more accurate descriptor because you do get extremes on both ends of the spectrum. But having said that, the overall trend, when you look at the average, that's the climate, and it is continuously rising, and that has devastating consequences, ones that are totally ignored um, in the mainstream of political discourse in this country and by the establishment, the entire Republican Party, and half the Democratic Party. So it's time to get serious. And by the way, they buried this report. They buried it. They decided, let's release it the day after Thanksgiving and hope that nobody will uh, talk about it. That was the goal. That's uh, considered, widely considered to be the slowest news day of the year. Why? Because Thanksgiving just happened, people are traveling back home, nobody's paying attention, and so you try to bury news stories, you know, in that little window so as to gloss over it and act like there's really nothing to see here. And again, at the, <laughs> it was a day, day or two before that Trump is tweeting about how climate change isn't real, and then his own government releases a report that says, oh my god, it's real, it is man-made, we are contributing to it, and we need to go in the other direction and go in the other direction now, ASAP. Pedal to the metal. No more waiting. So, we gotta get on it, and we have to view it as an opportunity, because it is an opportunity in terms of growing the economy in new, in new ways. Yes, the transition will be difficult for some people who are in that industry, who are in uh, the fossil fuel industry, but... You know, it was a hard transition for people who were in the Morse code industry when the telephone came out. That didn't mean we shouldn't <laughs> start using telephones. So we are going to evolve as an economy. And the answer is, 
how are we going to make sure that the people who are impacted by this in a negative way from those specific industries, how are we going to make sure that they make it through all right? And that's where the government comes in, and that's where a Green New Deal comes in, and that's where jobs programs come in. And it's time. We can't wait anymore. How many more reports do we need? How many more studies do we need? We see them endlessly. And the best that the other side can come up with, if you could even call it a side, is uh, big oil-funded rebuttals, which just raised out. And obviously, I don't even need to get into the fact that it's a conflict of interest if the people whose livelihood and profits depend on not addressing climate change, if they're the ones who say, hey, we shouldn't do anything on climate change. So, can't drag our feet anymore, man. Here we are. Devastating report, and uh, unfortunately it's going to get a lot less coverage than it should get.